Hi, I'm Walter Bugno. I'm the president and CEO of GTEC International. I joined the uh, gaming industry uh, back in the uh, early 90s um, uh, as a member of the board of a gaming company, a slot machine company in Australia called Star Games. And after that, I moved into the casino industry where I was the CEO for uh, Tabcorp uh, Casinos in Australia and then uh, GTEC, L'Automatica. I've been uh, with the, with the GTEC uh, for the last, uh, coming up to five years and um, I joined the company with, when an opportunity came up in the uh, slot machine, uh, gaming systems, uh, uh, VLT's um, sector of our business um, and took that role as a CEO. Then we went through a restructuring uh, recently, last year, uh, where we subdivided the business by uh, geography rather than product segments and uh, was appointed as the uh, CEO of the international part of our business. GTEC is an Italian-owned uh, uh, and based company, one of the largest gaming uh, companies in the world today. Uh, we specialise in a number of sectors in the industry. Our primary uh, segment is the lottery business, um, both in terms of being an operator so in, in places like, in, in markets like the Italian market or in some of the jurisdictions in the United States, we actually operate the lottery uh, for, that, uh, for that market. Uh, then we have a lottery services, technology products and services group, which actually supplies effectively all the solutions, all the product and technology solutions to, for an operator to run a lottery. Uh, we then have a gaming business uh, which uh, has a number of segments within that. Gaming machines, both for casinos, for public gaming like VLTs uh, and AWPs, casino systems um, and uh, VLT systems. Uh, and then we have a, an interactive and sports betting business uh, where we provide again all of the technology and product and content solutions for people to operate uh, an uh, online gaming uh, business. Uh, as a company, we operate globally. Um, so we are currently present uh, from a physical perspective in over 50 countries. We have offices in over 50 countries around the world. Of course, on a product and services basis, uh, that number multiplies uh, significantly beyond, uh, uh, beyond that. And uh, as such, we have structured our business into three uh, groups. Our uh, Italy group, our uh, Americas group, and then uh, the rest of the world, or the international, uh, the international group. Across every market, we offer the full array of products and services. So from lottery, uh, technology, product services, gaming, and interactive and sports betting. We have lots of competition in lots of sectors uh, and there's no, there is no common USP um, across all sectors, but the things that differentiate uh, our company. Uh, we are very strict and firm when it comes to uh, the regulatory environment and compliance and, uh, and so organizations uh, that deal with us know that we completely understand local operating uh, rules and uh, conditions and will uh, comply with that. We have over 400 gaming licenses around, uh, around the world, which also makes us uh, quasi unique uh, in that respect. We are a company that provides end-to-end -end, uh, services. Um, so from, uh, you know, from the beginning of developing a solution all the way to actually uh, operating or running uh, the end product is something that we can do and everything in between. Um, and of course, uh, we cover a, uh, uh, a wide array of sectors uh, um, with the same degree of focus, with the same degree of specialization, with the same degree of investment. Um, so you could truly classify us as uh, an almost one-stop shop for, uh, for your solutions. From an industry perspective, you know, what I consider to be the, you know, the hot buttons, the hot topics, um, one is, of course, the whole regulatory environment. 
uh, gaming, particularly with the onset of uh, online, um, uh, is becoming a, a much more uh, evident form of uh, leisure and entertainment uh, that a lot more people with mobile, for example, are getting access to. So governments around the world and regulatory bodies around the world are having to think much more diligently about the way that they control that. And by control, I mean all the way from things like responsible gaming and excessive gaming to uh, underage, uh, uh, underage control and, uh, and credit issues and et cetera, et cetera. So that is a very, very important uh, uh, issue that we're seeing uh, happen in the marketplace. The other one is that gaming is becoming omnipresent. Uh, before, if you wanted to uh, um, to have a gaming experience, uh, you physically had to, you know, get yourself out of the home into a car and and drive or walk or or, or to, to a venue uh, where a gaming experience in a contained um, in a contained environment uh, occurred. Now you can get access through any means to any form of gaming, in some cases not even in your country, um, which is part of the regulatory uh, issues. The loyalty then becomes a, uh, a, major, uh, a major trend that everyone that operates in the gaming industry needs to deal with. Uh, and by customer loyalty I mean both retention of your customer, but also the service that you as a supplier, as an operator, uh, provide to the customers. Before, it took a lot of effort for a customer to show their dissatisfaction because they physically had to walk out of a venue and go somewhere else, which may not have been convenient. Today, that whole experience is two clicks of a button. One to get out from the site that you're on, one to click into a new site. So the whole issue of bad customer experience, if you, if you provide it, you will lose a customer in the blink of a second. The whole issue of portability and mobility will continue to be a, um, uh, an overarching theme uh, in, uh, in the coming few years. Um, you know, access uh, is becoming so easy, but it will continue to increase because the quality of gaming experience on mobile, whilst improving, is still not an optimal solution. You have the issues of connectivity. You know, you can be playing real money on a mobile and then you lose your line. Uh, how, how frustrating is, is that as an experience? So solving that whole issue of portability and transportability and mobility will continue to be uh, a, big, um, uh, a big change. Um, secondly, the generation uh, that's coming through now uh, is a, a very technology savvy uh, generation of people who have attention spans which are significantly lower than people that were one or two generations before who were quite happy to sit in front of a, a gaming machine uh, for hours uh, um, to pass the time. Today people want to be engaged, today people want interactivity, today people want challenge, not repetition. Uh, and as a result, the, the work that needs to be done by the gaming developers, the content developers, is much more intricate and much more involved. So I think that's a trend that we will see. And then uh, the last one, uh, it's already topical, but we'll, I think we're again just scratching the surface, is, the, is player convergence. You'll hear this mentioned a lot. You know, players that play on one medium that then go and play across other mediums. The trend will be the ability to play the same game, maybe even in continuous mode, from, from device to device to device over time. Um, so I think that whole convergence of player across different mediums is something that we'll see really develop further. Uh, most governments uh, have, a, uh, have a shortage of uh, funds to be able to run um, you know, the programs, the community programs, uh, the social agenda in those countries. 
uh, invariably uh, they look at, uh, uh, at what tools do they have at disposal as a government to be able to fund those, uh, those social programs, um, educational, health programs. What are the funds? Uh, what are the sources of funds? And gaming uh, is one of those. Uh, through the taxes that are imposed on gaming or through the selling of licenses that, that where they own the gaming asset or the gaming um, uh, the gaming business, they can sell that on to a private uh, organisation. So I think what we'll see is governments utilise gaming as a tool to fund uh, the resolution of key economic problems in their, uh, in their jurisdictions. They have to balance that against the issue of social responsibility um, because it's a, it's a very, very fine um, uh, edge sword. Um, they could go from one side saying, I'm actually solving a problem, to another side of actually saying, am I seen by my constituents as doing this in a responsible way? Uh, and our goal as operators in this industry is to make sure that we always support government in that fine uh, treatment of social responsibility. I think there's areas like uh, the way that we engage players, the way that players' uh, issues are resolved. Uh, I think particularly on the online, um, you, you know, the, the whole issue of connectivity, again, comes up to being an issue. Um, quick service um, when, when it's remote. Um, you know, uh, at a casino, I have an issue. I have either a uh, um, a dealer or a croupier or a supervisor or a cashier that will solve my problem immediately on the spot. Not necessarily the way I want it to be solved sometimes, but that will solve it. The more remote that we become in, in, in the interface with the customer, the more challenging that service level becomes. And I think that's something that we could be uh, definitely uh, uh, working towards. You hear constantly of regulated and unregulated uh, countries or markets. You hear of regulated and unregulated sectors of the industry. And so organisations need to deal with that in a separate way. If we go all the way back to the question on USPs, I said one of our core USPs was that we uh, love operating within the boundaries of regulated environments. That's because it makes our life very clear. Um, and it allows us to set the rules to our uh, employees of what they can and they can't do in order to provide a very responsible uh, service to uh, our customers. I remember the first day that um, I, I walked into uh, the casino in Sydney in Australia um, uh, as the CEO. Uh, I felt like a kid walking into a, uh, a candy store or a toy shop. Uh, it was like a, a dream come true of all the things that you could actually uh, enjoy from a work experience um, uh, you do because the gaming industry at the end of the day is uh, leisure and entertainment. And so to be able to work in an industry that is uh, about leisure and entertainment can only be fun. And uh, that's to me the, the, the single uh, biggest highlight. Um, from a professional perspective, um, as a person, I'm a big believer in giving uh, our young talent uh, every opportunity to express and uh, achieve uh, without constraint. Uh, to me, it doesn't matter what age you are, what gender you are. It's about how much passion and desire you have to achieve. So, you know, to this day, um, I have, uh, I think I'm now up to about 140, 145 people that have worked for me that today are CEOs of businesses in their own rights. So when I list what's a career highlight, I think that's a pretty good one for me. You have to love it. You have to uh, enjoy being around people. Uh, you have to be able to understand that this is not about trying to take advantage. This is about providing uh, entertainment. And uh, every decision you make needs to be balanced in that uh, area of social responsibility. But amongst anything else, you have to have a passion for it. Um, because our industry thrives on making, of, of giving people some time of relaxation and fun. I recommend Tri Sphinx uh, 3D. We think it is the absolute best 
3D um, uh, slot product in the marketplace. Uh, and, um, and you don't have to wear glasses uh, um, to play it, and it's a fully one-on-one -on -one 3D experience. Uh, I think it's uh, fabulous. Uh, um, but also, um, uh, on our stand, we have some other great, uh, uh, great product. Plants versus Zombies, uh, which is a um, is a game that it, uh, sort of revolutionised almost the social gaming space. We've translated that into a very successful uh, gaming product, and uh, people can experience that uh, on a gaming machine, on a tablet, on a mobile uh, device. So that's a very good one. And then uh, one of my personal favourites, uh, one of my personal favourites is. Um, uh, a game called Bejeweled, which is another uh, big title in the social space, uh, which uh, our gaming designers developed a unique, uh, uh, a unique solution to bring it onto a gaming device. And I think that is an, the most outstanding piece of work I've ever seen from our gaming team. And finally, um, some of our mobile uh, uh, gaming products. Uh, uh, again, uh, the whole the whole ergonomics of the way that you can actually play on a mobile device now uh, through single touch uh, is fantastic to see. Great experience. Now I game. I don't gamble uh, because um, you know I always take calculated risks. <laughs> um, so I have favourite games that I enjoy. I love sports betting. I love football. So um, I do. Uh, uh, I do uh, wager on uh, the football and. Um, uh, and then I like playing uh, blackjack uh, it's, uh, and poker uh, and Caribbean stud. <laughs> I've won sometimes and I've lost sometimes and uh, uh, I've had uh, passions over many different uh, aspects. I had a lot, of, uh, a lot of interest in the horse racing industry so I used to own a lot of uh, racing thoroughbreds and uh, so that's but there was individually the biggest wins uh, when a, one of your horses wins a big uh, group one race uh, it's a lot of money um, but yeah I've had some good good outcomes let's say on uh, on some of the other gaming activity that I undertake